Hello and welcome to MentGuy 516. I'm Ben Coles. Today we're going to be replacing an RV electrical outlet with a residential electrical outlet that has two USB ports. Now a typical RV outlet looks like this and it has a completely sealed in back for protection. Now a residential outlet is usually exposed where you see the wires where they attach at the back and it gets put into an electrical box. And that box is usually nailed into a stud in the house while under construction. Now this can't be nailed into a stud. There are no studs in this trailer. And this actually just goes into a thin piece of plywood. So what it has is these wings on here. The wings right there and right there. And when you tighten the screws in the front, it causes those wings right in there to grip the plywood. And that's what holds this in place. Now the outlet I purchased is from E. Collier, and you can see that the uh, screws on the sides are exposed, the ground screw at the top. So this is a residential outlet, and it's considerably less expensive than an RV outlet when you include the USB ports. Uh, I believe two of these outlets with the faceplate cost $23.99 Canadian on Amazon.ca where I looked online for uh, an RV outlet with USB ports and I couldn't find any anywhere. So I went to a uh, local RV dealership, spoke to them there, they looked it up in a book, it was $120 Canadian for one outlet. So. In order to be able to install an outlet like this, you need uh, a box for it to go into, but the box isn't gonna be screwing in or nailing into a stud. So what you get is called a remodeler's box. This is a remodeler's box and similar to the RV outlet, it has these wings on top. So when you screw that, these wings go and they tighten just like the uh, RV outlets. So you put the box in and you take your outlet and you put your outlet in the box. The box I think is uh, something like uh, $3 for one of the boxes. So it's considerably less expensive than buying the RV outlet. Here are the tools you're gonna need for this. You're gonna need a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver, or you could use a drill with a Phillips head on it to make things a little easier. Some needle nose pliers, wire cutters, wire strippers, the outlet, faceplate, remodeler's box, and a voltage tester to make sure it's safe to do it. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is test to see if there's any power to the outlet. There's power to the outlet, so you need to go and turn that off. I unplugged it. Now, no power to the outlet. Next step is to take off the faceplate. Just prise off. Now you can see this is why I'm replacing the unit. Somehow I broke this area right here and that's where one of the wings is that holds it in place. So it's very loose in there right now. You just pull this out. Now, this is not the end of a line, so one of these will be power from the uh, uh, inverter, the other one will be going to the next electrical outlet in line. So we need to take both of those off. Now to get into the back of this outlet, you need to pry this back, pull that off, and you can see there's your wires there. If you were to replace this with another RV electrical outlet, I found out it is a bugger to get these wires out and to put new wires back in. It, uh, it takes a, a bit of time to do it and a bit of force. So all we're going to do is just snip those off. One set. And 
Now you want to just peel these wires back. I'm not doing it the safest way using a knife like this. An exacto is better to use for this. Now you need to strip these ends. The next step is to feed the wires through the remodeler's box. So we need to push in these tabs at the back so you can feed the wires through. Make sure you get enough through so you can work with the wires. Now we wire up the outlet. We'll start with the ground. I've loosened this screw quite a bit because I'm gonna to need to get both grounding wires put on there. go. Both are on there nice and tight. Now I put the white wires where it says white and I put the black wires where it says hot. We use this uh, one coming out from the bottom into the bottom slots. You have to loosen up these screws so that you can fit these in here. So this is the hot side so this is black and you just push it in this quick connect hole there all the way and you take your other black and put it in the other hole Both are in place. Let's go to the white side. Check these wires. They're good in place. Now, I've got to fit this back into the box here. Now these screws come with the outlet. Okay, it's in the box. Now what we should do is we should turn on the power and see if this outlet works before we go ahead and put it in the wall. We have power. Now as this is not the end of the line, this plugs into the outlet on the other side of the bed. We need to go and check that outlet and make sure there's power to that. And there is. Now we want to put this into the wall. What we have to be careful in doing is this flap at the bottom is sticking out because it's by gravity, it's just sticking out. So we need to make sure that we hold it in as we put the box in the hole. Now 
Now we tighten up these and that will cause the wings to come out and secure it in place. I could feel that it gripped there so I don't need to tighten anymore. Yeah, be very careful when you do this. You do not want to strip that plastic. And there, that is good and secure. That is not going anywhere. Now, it's a matter of putting on the plate. And it's done. So that was a very simple install. I also put one of those outlets on the other side of the bed. It was the end of the line, so we just had the one black going in, the one white going in, and the one ground. So it was a little simpler of an install. All in all, doing both sides took about half an hour and about $30 Canadian. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next video.